Hello everybody, I am Miss Natalie and this is Read Along from Kalamazoo Public Library. We are reading The Son of Neptune from the series Heroes of Olympus by Rick Riordan. Uh, as always, we are reading on Hoopla and when we finished up on Friday, we had read, uh, I think it was chapter 17, where we learned a little bit more about Hazel and about what had happened to her up in Alaska. So remember, Hazel and her mother, Marie, had relocated from, uh, from Louisiana in New Orleans all the way up to Alaska because Gaia had kind of possessed or brainwashed Marie into thinking that if she went up there, she'd be rich and get all the things that she had always wanted. And really, Gaia was using Marie and Hazel to help resurrect her oldest son, the strongest giant, Alcyonius, who is like the anti-Pluto, uh, who is, of course, Hades, the god of the underworld. Hazel, when she realized this is what was happening and she knew it would basically bring, up, bring about the end of the world, she kind of sacrificed herself and she used her power to, I mean, she didn't kind of do that. She totally did that. And she used her power to bring that entire cavern into itself and she collapsed it. And so that is actually how she died. We knew that Hazel had been brought back to life. It had been hinted at and then outright said so many times in the book uh, when she was talking to her brother, Nico. And it's kind of uh, great, I guess, is the word, to hear about how it happened. It makes Hazel probably the bravest character in the entire series. You know, somebody who, who truly gave herself up for the entire world and had just expected that to happen, never thinking anything um, like this would happen where she would come back to life, and she did. So, unfortunately, we learned all this amidst a... She gets, like, flashbacks that make her pass out. And so she had been traveling with Percy and Frank in a boat. Okay, I think we recapped everything. Also, I wanted to say... Here is my contact information. So I just recently found out, and I can't believe I didn't think about this earlier, there have been quite a few adults and kids who've wanted to get a hold of me about this program because they have questions, or maybe you're a librarian or a teacher and you want to start your own program uh, like related to this. If you have a question or some feedback, Go ahead and email me. This gets right to my Kalamazoo Public Library email. I check my email every single day. It is faster than actually calling the library and find us because, of course, as we all know, pandemic life is crazy pants and we're just all over the place. My schedule is weird. So if you need assistance or you have a question or some feedback for me, email me here. Okay, let's get to the chapter. Chapter 18. Hazel. Hazel. Frank shook her arms, sounding panicked. Come on, please, wake up. She opened her eyes. The night sky blazed with stars. The rocking of the boat was gone. She was lying on solid ground, her bundled sword and pack beside her. She sat up groggily, her head spinning. They were on a cliff overlooking a beach. About a hundred feet away, the ocean glinted in the moonlight. The surf washed gently against the stern of their beached boat. To her right, hugging the edge of the cliff, was a building like a small church with a searchlight in the steeple. A lighthouse, Hazel guessed. Behind them, fields of tall grass rustled in the wind. Where are we? she asked. Frank exhaled. Oh, thank the gods you're awake. We're in Mendocino, about 150 miles north of the Golden Gate. A hundred and fifty miles? Hazel groaned. I've been out that long? Percy knelt beside her, the sea wind sweeping his hair. He put his hand on her forehead as if checking for a fever. We couldn't wake you. Finally, we decided to bring you ashore. We thought maybe the seasickness. It wasn't seasickness. She took a deep breath. She couldn't hide the truth from them anymore. She remembered what Nico had said. If a flashback like that happens when you're in combat. I, I haven't been honest with you, she said. 
What happened was a blackout. I have them once in a while. A blackout? Frank took Hazel's hand, which start startled her, though pleasantly so. Is it medical? Why haven't I noticed before? I try to hide it, she admitted. I've been lucky so far, but it's getting worse. It's not medical. Not really. Nico says it's a side effect from my past, from where he found me. Percy's intense green eyes were hard to read. She couldn't tell whether he was concerned or wary. Where exactly did Nico find you? He asked. Hazel's ton tongue felt like cotton. She was afraid if she started talking, she'd slip back into the past. But they deserved to know. If she failed them on this quest, zonked out when they needed her most, she couldn't bear that idea. I'll explain, she promised. She clawed through her pack. Stupidly, she'd forgotten to bring a water bottle. Is, is there anything to drink? Yeah. Percy muttered a curse in Greek. That was dumb. I left my supplies down at the boat. Hazel felt bad asking them to take care of her, but she'd woken up parched and exhausted, as if she'd lived the last few hours in both the past and the present. She shouldered her pack and sword. Never mind, I can walk. Don't even think about it, Frank said. Not until you've had some food and water. I'll get the supplies. No, I'll go. Percy glanced at Frank's hand on Hazel's. Then he scanned the horizon as if he sensed trouble. But there was nothing to see. Just the lighthouse and the field of grass stretching inland. You two stay here. I'll be right back. You sure? Hazel said feebly. I don't want you to... It's fine, said, Fr said Percy. Frank, just keep your eyes open. Something about this place... I don't know. I'll keep her safe, Frank promised. Percy dashed off. Once they were alone, Frank seemed to realize he was still holding Hazel's hand. He cleared his throat and let go. I, um, I think I understand your blackouts, he said, and where you come from. Her heartbeat stumbled. You do? Well, you seem so different from other girls I've met. He blinked and rushed on. Not like, bad different. Just the way you talk. The things that surprise you. Like songs or TV shows or slang people use. You talk about your life like it happened a long time ago. You were born in a different time, weren't you? You came from the underworld. Hazel wanted to cry. Not because she was sad, but because it was such a relief to hear someone say the truth. Frank didn't act revolted or scared. He didn't look at her as if she were a ghost or some awful undead zombie. Frank, I... We'll figure it out, he promised. You're alive now. We're going to keep you that way. The grass rustled behind them. Hazel's eyes stung in the cold wind. I don't deserve a friend like you, she said. You don't know what I am, what I've done. Stop that, Frank scowled. You're great. Besides, you're not the only one with secrets. Hazel stared at him. I am not? Frank started to say something, then he tensed. What? Hazel asked. The wind stopped. She looked around and noticed he was right. The air had become perfectly still. So? she asked. Frank swallowed. So why is the grass still moving? Out of the corner of her eye, Hazel saw dark shapes ripple through the field. Hazel! Frank tried to grab her arms, but it was too late. Something knocked him backward, and then a force like a grassy hurricane wrapped around Hazel and dragged her into the fields. Oh my gosh, it's such a short chapter! Oh. It's okay, it's the beginning of a week, so it's fine. We're just going to ease our way into the week. So, everybody have a great, great night, and then tomorrow we will read chapter 19.